All right, it's meeting time, 411. I'm glad you're here. What a meeting God's been giving us this week. Stand together with Brother Roger. We're going to sing this good hymn, Revive Us Again, 411. We praise the old God for the Son of thy love, Lord Jesus, who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, find the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. Revive us again. We praise the old God. seated we're going to keep singing the night heavenly father we love you and that is our prayer that you would revive us again lord make us willing to open wide our mouth tonight and as you have for these last four services we know that you'll fill it i pray that if there's one not saved they would get saved and i pray the saint would be stirred to revival we'll give you the praise for all of it in jesus name amen all right brother roger's going to come and lead us in another song all right, 169, there's a sweet, sweet spirit. We'll sing both verses of page 169. There's a sweet, sweet spirit.
right hand of fellowship. We're so glad that you're here. Revival meeting time. As you make your way back, we're going to sing that chorus one more time. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, sing it now. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. song good song you can be seated in just a moment we're going to receive the offering every bit of which will go to Dr. Scott Caudle what a blessing he's been I'm so grateful he made the comment I've made the comment too, brother Caudle evangelists don't come with revival in their hip pocket but an evangelist with the word of God and the touch of God will give us what God has for us. And every single message has been exactly what I needed. And I believe exactly what our church has needed. And uh, so we're looking forward to hearing from him. But it is our joy. It is our responsibility. But it is our joy to be able to take care of God's man. So when the offering is received, all of it, you can rest assured, unless you mark it now, we promise we'll abide by your tithe or missions, but you'll need to put it in an envelope because if Miss Donna sees it floating around, she's going to make sure the preacher has it. All right, so men, if you'll come, we're going to receive the offering. Brother Tim, when you get here, would you please come behind the pulpit and pray for the giving tonight? Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely. 
the simplest way to give to your local church. Amen. I'm telling you, it's worth coming to church to get to hear that good piano playing. Now, I mean that. What a blessing. I appreciate all of the good music, all of the good singing. And uh, I must say it would be a blessing if some of you guys would move over here on this side, though. It really would be a blessing. I find myself having a hard time dividing my time, but uh, I'll do the best I can. It's so good to see you. Miss Wendy's saying something back there about some of y'all. I believe I'd check up on that before you go home tonight. But what a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. And I'm so glad you're here. I've certainly asked the Lord to meet with us this evening. And I've been encouraged. Some of you have already told me that you remembered your responsibility and you've got some folks coming on Sunday. I'm excited about that. Well, it's still not too late. In fact, you know what? We ought to invite some folks tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. We got service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock and might as well just get started early. But especially on the Lord's Day, as I go down the road early Friday morning, I give you my word, I'm going to be praying for your Lord's Day here. And I pray that it will be one of the greatest Easter Sundays you have ever had in the history of Landmark Baptist Church. I sure do appreciate and love y'all. And Pastor, I'm so grateful for the invitation not only to be here this year, but uh, every other year. Now, if Jesus comes back before the next time I get here, Brother Caleb will be in charge of the service. <laughs> so you can settle that with him if you're here. But uh, I look forward to uh, going on home to glory if he comes back. But if he doesn't, I look forward to being here. And again, not next year, but the next. And I'll be praying for you. Again, I've said it. I think twice thus far, but Cassie and I could not do what God has called us to do without pastors like Pastor Sam Robinson and without churches like the Landmark Baptist Church. And we are so grateful for your faithful support. It is because of that that I'm able to help churches with their missions, not only if they can afford to have a meeting, but I go to many places that can't afford to have a meeting. And I'm able to do that because of your faithful support. So we're so tremendously grateful. And then a portion of your support will go to our trip to Africa last summer. We spent the majority of the summer between the United Kingdom and Europe. And Lord willing, we'll be leaving in the month of July for three different countries in Africa. So if you would please, please, would you pray for us? Um, you know, you hear horror stories about people getting sick and things like that, but uh, would you just help us pray that God would build a hedge of protection about us? Uh, there's a lot of uh, air miles in that trip, and we're praying for safety there as well. Uh, but we go as a part of your representatives while we are there, and we are thrilled to do so. Well, before we open our Bibles tonight, I spent a little more time talking because I, I wanted to um, know, I wanted to feel good about the song I'm going to sing tonight. Can I sing a fun song for you tonight? Now, this is a fun song to sing. And uh, when I was looking, Miss Sharon, for uh, songs for my latest CD, of course, I had the song I sang last night, I Will Trust You, Lord, but, and the preacher, you, you'll know what I mean when I say this. I wanted an old-time quartet song. 
Now, I can't sing all four parts at one time tonight. On the CD, I did. I sung all four parts, but I just will sing the lead tonight. But I wanted an, a, a, what I call a get-up-and-go song. You can't put all slow songs on your CD. I mean, it just gets boring after a while. So I was looking for an old-fashioned get-up-and-go song, and I could have gone back into the hymnal and got something real old, and, and I have done that. I, I try to include at least one or two hymns right out of the hymn book on every recording that I make, but I was just looking for an original old-time quartet song that was a get-up-and-go song. And so I was preaching for my friend, Dr. Leonard Fletcher, and there was a songwriter there, and his name was Rodney Hedrick. And uh, he, he said to me, he said, I hear you're looking for a song. I said, yes, sir. Have you got any you could send me? So he probably sent me seven or eight songs, and I listened to them and uh, couldn't find one that I liked. And, and so I let him know, I, I just don't think any of these will fit me. And he said, well, tell me what you are looking for. I said, I'm looking for a get up and go old time quartet song like I used to hear when I was a boy on Sunday morning listening to the gospel singing Jubilee on channel 2 at our local station and so he said got exactly what you need so he sent me this song he and Diane Wilkerson wrote it together and it talks about that jail keeper in the book of uh, uh, Acts when Paul and Silas were thrown into the jail you know and at midnight, they prayed and sang praises to the Lord. Well, as soon as I heard this song entitled The Jail Keeper, I knew it was exactly what I was looking for. Now, it's, it's a get-up-and-go song, so y'all got to be prepared for that. But every time I sing it, I am reminded that my get-up-and-go has got up and went. <laughs> so I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a shot now. I don't know, I don't know really, I don't know that I've ever sung it without messing up. So I'm going to try to sing it tonight without messing up. It's called The Jail Keeper. Shackled by chains inside a prison cell Paul and Silas had a burden for the keeper bound for hell Looking beyond their chains they clearly could see He was a one in prison and they had their liberty Well they praised God and sang until the doors opened wide When the keeper awoke he found them still inside He heard them as they prayed and trusted God through the night he knew he was a sinner and that's when he got right Oh yes, the jailkeeper was finally set free All along Paul and Silas knew that Jesus held the key When the earth shook and trembled, he fell at their feet Sin's chains were broken and the jailkeeper set free Told you it was a get up and go. <laughs> Run with the devil and you'll stay in your chains. In the darkness of sin, your heavy burden remains. Jesus has paid the debt so you can go free. He shed his blood and died upon the cross of Calvary. Oh, friend, won't you look beyond the pleasure of sin? There is judgment to come unless you've been born again. So fall on your knees, call on the Savior today. He will save your soul and wash your sins all away. Just like that jailkeeper, you'll find it be free. You'll know like his prisoners did that Jesus held the key. When you rise up, redeem, you'll see your shackles at your feet. Sin's chains were broken and another prisoner set free. Oh yes, the jailkeeper was finally set free. All along, Paul and Silas knew that Jesus held the key. When the earth shook and trembled, he fell at their feet. Sin's chains were broken and the jail keeper set free. 
set free, set free. Amen. Well, we made it. We made it through it. That's a challenge to sing that. I tell you, you, got, you can't smoke and sing a song like that, I guarantee you. You can't even dip snuff and sing a song like that. So uh, drink lots of water, get a good night's sleep, and then maybe you can try it. But I love trying to sing that song. I'm thankful for my heritage. I'm thankful I grew up listening to old southern gospel music. And it wouldn't take nothing for it, make no apology for it, and I thank God for it tonight. Well, take your Bible, if you would please, and turn with me to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter number 2. And with the help of the Lord, in just a few moments, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 42 of the chapter and be reading through the final verse of the chapter, that of course being verse number 47. The book of Acts, chapter number 2. Several times throughout the course of a week of meeting like this, if I'm really wrestling with what to preach, sometimes as I pray, I will ask myself, if you was the pastor, what kind of message would you want the the visiting evangelist to preach? Well, Pastor Robinson, if I was a pastor... I would certainly want the visiting evangelist to preach the message for my church that I lay down my life in service for every week of my life. So I want to be a blessing tonight. Normally in a revival meeting like this, on the Wednesday night of the meeting, I try to challenge that church family where I'm at. And tonight I will be doing the same with the help of the Lord. Have you found your place in the book of Acts chapter number 2? I love this book of the New Testament of the Bible. It has often been called the history book of the early church. It is a vital book of the New Testament in that it is a book that bridges the gap between the Gospels and the epistles and in that sets the standard for what God expects from His church. By the time we begin our reading tonight in verse 42 of Acts chapter 2, the apostle Peter has stood and preached the word of God to the point that 3,000 souls were born into the family of God. And as we'll see by our reading tonight, that wasn't the end of the story for the church. It was only the beginning. And I trust that will be made evident tonight as I preach on the thought, a church that God can use. If you're able tonight, would you please stand as we read the Bible together. Acts chapter 2, notice what the Word of God says in verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now we're going to be using our Bibles tonight as we have every night thus far and as we will tomorrow night. And therefore I trust you'll leave them handy. Let's bow our heads, shall we, for a moment of prayer. Father... You have been so good to us in this meeting this week and therefore we are so appreciative. 
I pray that you would use me now to be a help and a blessing to the Landmark Baptist Church of Evansville, Indiana. Lord, if that's going to be the case tonight, the only way I can help these precious people that I love is if you help me. And therefore I pray you would cleanse me of sin and self and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. And I'll give you, a, give you honor and glory, for truly thou art worthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for standing. Please be seated. I'm preaching on the thought tonight, a church that God can use. I believe with all of my heart this evening, as you and I study the Bible we will discover that God's primary means of reaching the world with the gospel today is through the ministry efforts of the local Bible-believing church. Here in the book before us, we witness not only the birth of the early church of Jerusalem, but we witness the blessing of the early church as well. I say that because if you'll notice again in the latter portion of verse 47, the Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, of course, since the early church was made up of fallible people, it certainly wasn't a perfect church. However, it was God's church. And therefore, since it was God's church, it was a church that God used in a mighty, in a miraculous way. I submit to you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, that God used the early church in a mighty way because the early church had the right message. They realized the importance of the gospel. I believe you'll discover while studying and reading your Bible that the early church not only had the right message, but they had the right mindset. Those that made that early church up were aware of the fact that God had left them in Jerusalem in order to make a difference in the lives of others. They had the right mindset for ministry. And then I submit to you God used the early church in a mighty way because they had the right muscle. If you'll recall, shortly before the Lord Jesus ascended back to His throne in glory, He told His disciples according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. Did you hear what God said that He would give His people? He said that He would give His people power. I like to call that power the power of the Holy Spirit of God, God. God's muscle for ministry. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that has been God's plan for His church all along, to fill us with His power, not so that people could point us out and say, my, what a Christian he or she is. No, the purpose of being filled with God's power is so that we might be the witnesses under the uttermost part of the earth that God has committed commanded us to be. Now that's God's will tonight for each of our lives, to be witnesses to a lost and dying world. Please allow me to remind you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, that God has called each of us to that end. Please allow me to remind you that God will fill us to that end as we seek and desire that power or that feeling. Let me remind you this evening, God will enable us to that end and He ultimately will use us to that end. That has always been God's plan for His church to fill us with His power in order that He might use the church to the fullest extent. 
In fact, I believe I can make this statement and be scripturally correct in making it. God still longs to use His people that make up His church today to reach a lost and dying world with the gospel. And therefore it goes without saying. It ought to be your heart's desire and it certainly ought to be my heart's desire to do my part in making sure the local church is the kind of church that God can and therefore will bless and used to the absolute fullest extent. It has been said and I certainly agree only as the local church fulfills its mission's obligation does the church justify its very existence. Now this isn't necessarily a mission's message tonight but since uh, it's inside of me sooner or later it had to spill out. Let me remind you tonight church the mission of the church should be missions. The ministry of the church should be missions. What's important to our God should never cease to be important to each of us. And God says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let me remind you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, where there is a creature, God intends for there to be a preacher. And therefore, church, we must must strive to be all that we possibly can be, not for our glory, but for the glory of the great and almighty God that we serve. And therefore, for the next very few moments, I want to invite you to consider the text before us with me. And while doing so, I would like to address the following question. If the local church is God's primary means of reaching the uttermost part of the world with the gospel, and it certainly is, then what is it that Landmark Baptist Church of Evansville, Indiana can learn about this church in the text the church that according to the latter portion of verse 47, the Lord added to daily. If it's God's will for His church to reach the world with the gospel, and it certainly is, then how can each of us do our part in making sure our local church is the kind of local church that God can and therefore will bless and use to the fullest extent. What is it about this early church God would have us to see tonight? Well, just a few truths directly from your King James Bible. First of all, notice number one, this church, well, they were united in their fellowship. This church was united in their fellowship. Now according to the text to which God has led us to tonight, the 3,000 souls that were saved on the day of Pentecost were not only baptized, but according to verse 47, the Bible says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Notice if you would please verse number 44. The Bible teaches us in verse 44, And all that believed were what? They were together and had all things common. The Bible goes to great lengths to teach us here that this early church, are you listening tonight? They were united in their fellowship. Notice verse 45. Verse 45 teaches us that they sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Look at verses 46 and 40, 47. And they continuing daily with one accord 
in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God verse 47 says and having favor with all the people. Why it's no wonder the Bible says in the latter portion of verse 47 that the Lord added to the church daily. God blessed the church and he did so by adding to the church. It was the clear result of the church being united in their fellowship. Why do you think for one moment tonight the Holy Spirit of God would have been within a thousand miles of this church if they would have been bickering and murmuring and complaining and belly aching? Absolutely not. But since this church was united in their fellowship, why the Holy Ghost of God felt right at home amongst the people of God. And therefore, I don't know about you. I can only uh, give testimony personally. But I want to be a part of the kind of church where the Holy Ghost feels right at home. However, if that's ever going to be the case, I must see the need in my own life to promote fellowship and to promote unity at the house of God. You want to know what it was about this early church that caused the Lord to add to it on a daily basis? I'll tell you one thing. It was the fact they were united in their fellowship. Can I encourage you to do something maybe this week during your own daily devotions? Go to the book of Acts, start in chapter number 1. Read through this great book of the New Testament of the Bible and underline, highlight, Circle every time you see the words one accord. That phrase one accord is used as it relates to the church more times in the book of Acts than any other book of the Bible. Acts chapter number 1 and verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Acts chapter 4 and verse 24, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. Acts chapter 8 and verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake over and over again. You'll read that little two-word phrase, one accord. Acts chapter 15 and verse 25, before the early church sent out their first mission, The Bible says they were assembled, guess how? With one accord. Let me remind you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, here according to the chapter in which the Lord has led us tonight, before you or I either one, read about the Holy Ghost showing up as a rushing mighty wind, filling God's people with God's muscle for ministry. We read these words in verse 1 where the Bible says they, they were all with one accord in one place. Why, it's no wonder God showed up in such a mighty, in such a miraculous way. It's no wonder the early church experienced miracle after miracle, wonder after wonder. The church, are you listening? They were united in their fellowship. This church prayed together. This church labored together. They worked together. They worshiped together. What they did for the brethren and for the cause of Christ, the Bible teaches us that they did it together. They were united in their fellowship. Hear me tonight. That is exactly why the enemy will do anything he can possibly do to cause discord down at the house of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I refuse to be the one the enemy will use to cause discord in the church. I I may have my faults, but I have bound and determined that's not going to be one of them. I want to ask God every day to help me do my part in promoting unity at the house of God and not division. Can I ask you a question? What about you? 
Are you doing your part to promote unity at the house of God? Let me encourage you to consider this Bible truth tonight. When you study the Bible, especially as you read and study the Pauline epistles of the New Testament of the Bible, I personally believe God used Paul to pen 14 of the 27 books of the New Testament of the Bible. But when you study the Pauline epistles and when you specifically consider the prison epistles, you will discover that Paul had a very special place in his heart for the local church in the Macedonian colony of Philippi. Paul loved the Philippian believers and the Philippian believers loved Paul. Remember according to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 16, this was the local church that had sent, what did Paul say? Once and again unto his necessity. Paul loved the church at Philippi and the church at Philippi loved him. And when you begin to consider, when you understand the great relationship that Paul shared with his friends at Philippi and the relationship uh, his friends at Philippi shared with him, then you'll certainly understand why Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2, Fulfill you my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Why did Paul pray such a prayer for his friends at Philippi? I'll tell you why. Because he loved them and he wanted to see God bless them. He wanted to see God use them to the fullest extent. But Paul was wise enough to know then what you and I ought to be wise enough to know tonight. If the Philippian believers were to experience the blessings of God, then they must, they must make being united in their fellowship a top priority. Can I ask you a question tonight? How about you, Landmark Baptist Church? I know and love your pastor. He's one of my dear friends and I know it's your pastor's heart's desire for Landmark Baptist Church to be united in fellowship. But what about your heart's desire? Your pastor can promote unity and fellowship in the church, but he can't do it effectively alone. If he's the only member of the church that has a desire to promote fellowship, then he's going to have a hard road to walk down here. No, you have to be willing to do your part. You have to be willing to keep your eyes on the Lord. Forget about what they said about you. Forget about what they posted. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Do you part in promoting unity and promoting fellowship in the house of God? Can I hasten to ask you tonight, are you helping the church or are you hindering the church? If you are helping the church, then you are a child of God that ultimately realizes the only way this church can be used of God to the fullest extent to reach a lost and dying world with the gospel is for this church to realize the need of being united in their fellowship. This church was united in their fellowship. It's no wonder the Lord added to the church daily. Amen. This church was not only united in their fellowship, but let me call your attention, if I may, again to verse 42 of Acts chapter 2. Because this verse of Scripture, this portion of the Bible teaches us that the church was not only united in their fellowship, but the church was unanimous in their efforts. Do you see the word they in verse 42? The Bible says, and who continued steadfastly? They did. The entire church. This church had determined to not only be united in fellowship, They had determined to be unanimous in their efforts. They continued steadfastly. Notice if you would please verse 43. 
In verse 43, the Bible says that fear came upon every soul, not just a few of them, but every soul. Walk with me now here in your Bible. Notice again verse number 44. Verse 44 says, And all they that believed were what? They were together and had all things common. Verse 45 goes on to say that they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every Every man had need. Verse 46, and they continuing daily in one accord. Who? They, the entire church, continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. It's no wonder the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This was a church that was not only unanimous, they were not only united and their fellowship they were unanimous in their efforts what they did they did together they worked together they made a difference together walk with me here in the pages of your Bible verse 42 they participated together verse 42 they prayed together verse 45 they provided for one another and they did it together verse 46 they promoted fellowship together verse 46 Seven, they praise God together. What they did to advance the cause of Christ, they realized the need and in fact the blessing of doing it together. They were unanimous. They were unanimous in their efforts. And hear me tonight. That's God's will for Landmark Baptist Church. To not only be united in their fellowship, but to be unanimous in their efforts. That is exactly why God used the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 to pen these words. Don't miss it now, for we are laborers together, and I like these next two words, with God. For we are laborers together with God. As you and I work together, God works with us. As we labor together, as we pull the load together, as we labor together, God works with us. It is a team effort, or at least it should be. Any church that God has and is using in a miraculous way is a church that is unanimous in their efforts. You see, as hard as I labor, if I labor alone, it won't amount to much. But when my labor is coupled with your labor, and when our label, labor rather is coupled with your labor and your labor, why, it's absolutely astonishing what can be accomplished when we labor together. You know, that's one of the reasons why I love faith promise missions giving. That's one of the reasons Cassie and I increase our faith promise every year by faith. Because my faith promise missions offering alone, it won't amount to much. But when you couple my faith promise with yours, and when we couple ours with yours, and yours, and yours. Why, it's amazing at the churches that can be planted. It's amazing at the missionaries that can be supported. If we're going to see the Lord bless and use Landmark Baptist Church in a mighty way, then we're going to have to be unanimous in our efforts. Now... There's one other thing I want to share with you, and I'm through tonight. But all throughout the course of this message, the Lord keeps burdening my heart to share this story. I I don't have it in my notes. I just feel impressed to share this true story with you, and then I'll give you my last point, and we'll be through. True story. It was, it will be 10 years ago, This coming first Sunday in May, 
that Cassie and I left the pastorate after 22 years to go with Macedonia and to serve as their general director. Ten years. It's hard to believe. just seems like yesterday, but it's ten years. And when I left the pastorate, I knew that I needed a home church, a, a sending church. And so I met with my dear friend, the pastor of the People's Baptist Church at that time, a fellow by the name of Dave McCoy. He has since passed away and he's in heaven tonight. But I told him, I said, Preacher McCoy, I, I need a sending church. I, I need a supporting pastor. And I said, I've prayed about it. And with your permission, Cassie and I would love to become members of People's Baptist Church of McDonough, Georgia. And of course, he and his wife, Miss Trish, they were thrilled and we were thrilled. And so on that first Sunday, we were there. The preacher preached that Sunday morning. But he asked me to preach Sunday night. And uh, I, I preached about the importance of being the kind of church member that others would thank God for. And you know what? Unless the Lord changes my mind, I may pre preach that to you folks tomorrow night. But I'll never forget what happened at the end of that message. Now God had been so gracious and God had already filled my calendar. That was the last Sunday that I would be at my sending church until the first Sunday of the next year. I mean, within just a few weeks, God filled my entire calendar for the very first year that we were in missions. And so after I finished preaching, I explained that to the church. I said, the Lord has opened a lot of doors and I won't, I won't even see you folks until this time next year. But then as my pastor sat on the platform, I turned to him. And this is what I've said. Preacher, this is somewhat different than I'm used to because for the last 22 years of my life, I was the pastor. But now, you are my pastor. You are my sending and you are my supporting pastor. And so I want to go on record tonight and I want the entire congregation to hear what I'm getting ready to say. And I said, and I looked at him, and I pointed towards him, and I said, Preacher, with God's help, I give you my word not only as a gentleman, but even more importantly as a Christian. You'll never lose a moment of sleep worrying over me or my family as far as whether or not we're supported. You preach that Bible, you believe that Bible, you lead the church according to the Bible, we're for you and we're following you because the Bible teaches me to follow the faith of my pastor. And after I made that public commitment to him, I turned to the congregation. And on that Sunday night, man, there was a great crowd there. And this is what I told them. I said, now I want you to know I love you. And out of all the churches in the world, we could have joined. Cassie and I feel that God has led us here. And we want you to know we're thrilled that you have accepted us into the membership of People's Baptist Church. And then I told them this. Don't you ever talk to me about that man of God right there. Don't you ever Call me on the phone and run him down. Never use my ear as a garbage dump. Now that was 10 years ago. Do you want to know how many people has called me to run down the preacher? Zero. Zero. I wonder how many things like that in the local church would take care of themselves if we just all lay the line. Just go ahead and say, look, you pray for your preacher. Don't talk to me after the service. If I, I tell you what, if you want to talk about Brother Sam, tell you what, if you'll meet me after the service, I'll take you and we'll go right back there to his office and we'll talk to the man of God. Isn't that what the Bible says do? 
I mean, God gave us a road map for such things. It would behoove us and it would certainly behoove the church to follow it. Amen? I want to do my part in promoting unity and fellowship and camaraderie at the house of God. Now, I realize I come from a, from a different time. I understand that. But my mama taught me growing up, if you couldn't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. That's what I've tried to do all my life, and it served me real well. You say, well, preacher, have you heard what they said about you on the Internet? Nope, not interested. By the way, I don't have time to hear what they say. I don't have time. I don't understand where they get all that time. I ain't got time to make videos about other preachers. I, I ain't got time for there's too many tracks to pass out. I'm preaching every night of my life. I'm traveling from pillar to post, living out of a suitcase. I don't know where they get time to find so much fault with other preachers. I don't understand it. I don't have time for it. So don't tell me what they say. I'm not interested. I'm too busy prom promoting fellowship at the house of God. And by the way, when you respond to them, that's what they want. You want to really get them? Just act like they're not even there. It'll be a cold day where the booger man lives before I respond to them. Are you hearing me? Do your part to promote unity. Promote fellowship. Did you hear what the preacher said? Nope, not interested. Not interested. Now, if he stands up one Sunday morning and he says, take your NIV and turn to, absolutely, run him out of town on a rail and I'll come down here and help you. But if he's preaching this book, he's living right, and he's busy about the Lord's business, I'd hate to be the one to stand against him. I'm not going to be the one to stand against him. I'm going to do my part by the good grace of God to promote fellowship, to promote unity in the house of God. Because if this church is going to be the kind of church God can use, it's going to have to be united in fellowship and it's going to have to be unanimous in its actions. You ought to serve God together. Make a difference for God together. Do it together. Amen. And finally, God used this church in a wonderful way because they were urgent in their actions. Urgent in their actions. Can I tell you how we can know that tonight? When you read the latter portion of Acts chapter 2, when the apostle Peter stood and preached that day on the day of Pentecost, when 3,000 souls were born into the family of God, just as soon as they were saved by the grace of God, what happened then? They were scripturally baptized. And having been, done, having been scripturally baptized, they got busy serving the Lord. You know why? They were urgent in their actions. So let me leave you with this tonight. What we do, we best get busy doing it. I can't believe a while ago I said it's been 10 years since we left the pastorate. That's a decade. And I'm telling you, it seems just like that. A decade. James asks a very sobering question in the book of James. For what is your life? Then he answered the question. You remember what he said? That's right. It is only, it is but as a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. God didn't say through the pen of James that our lives on this earth was like smog because smog hangs around a while. He didn't even say that our lives on this earth were like smoke because smoke hangs around a while. Uh-uh. Next time you drink your cup of coffee in the morning, 
that vapor, that steam that comes off of your cup of coffee, God says, that's just like your life. No wonder Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 9 and verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Can I close with true story? True story. True story. I can't remember where Cassie and I were. We were in a meeting somewhere and the meeting ended on Sunday. A lot of the missions conferences we were in start on Wednesday and they end on Sunday. So if I'm close enough to get back home on Monday, if we get up early and we, we drive early, I can have almost an entire day at home before I go to the office the next day. And so such was the case in this particular missions conference. And so we got up very early and drove for two or three hours before we even stopped. And so we needed to stop and freshen up a little, get a cup of coffee. And so we stopped at just a McDonald's three hours, two or three hours from the church where we were staying. Cassie went on to the bathroom to wash her hands and to freshen up a little. And I stepped up to the counter and have you ever had or heard of somebody having an experience that caused their whole life to flash right before your, their, their eyes? Now, I used to hear people say that, and I think, ah, that's not true. I'll never say that again because it happened to me that day. Can I tell you why? When I stepped up to that counter, that young lady that was waiting on me, she could not have been more than... 16, 17 years of age. And I said, yes, ma'am, I would like a regular cup of coffee with half and half. That's it. That's what I want. She said, all right, that'll be 50 cents. And I said, 50 cents? Hallelujah. Man, that's a good deal on coffee. Beat Starbucks down the road. They're getting three and four dollars. 50 cents. And I asked her, I said, are you running a special on coffee today? And she looked at me and she said, and she didn't smile. She wasn't kidding. She said, no, sir, I gave you the senior's discount. <laughs> and that's when I had it, Brother Roger. I still remember going to kindergarten. I do. I remember kindergarten. I love kindergarten. But at the end of kindergarten, you went to the first grade and you stopped playing and had to start learning. And I didn't like the first grade. So I thought, man, if I could ever get out of the first grade, surely the second is better. And then I got out of the first and went to the second and I thought, you know, if I could get out of elementary school and finally go to high school, wouldn't that be wonderful? And guess what? Just like that, eight or nine years later, made it. Then I got in high school, and I thought, well, if I could graduate out of high school, I'd saw all them seniors, you know, and they'd have all these senior appreciation days and banquets. And boy, and I thought, boy, if I could ever be a senior. And you know what? Three years later, I was a senior. And then I thought, man... We're going to be graduating soon. I can't wait to graduate. Boy, we'll get a job and, man, be done with this school business. And just like that, I graduated high school. Then I got tired of people telling me what to do, so I joined the Navy. <laughs> and, boy, I still remember when the bus pulled up to sunny Orlando, Florida, and that drill sergeant met me about that far from my face, calling me everything that my mama told me to never call people. And I thought to myself, dear Lord, what in the world have I done with my life? And I got to thinking, man, if I could ever get out of here. And you know what? Six years later, got out. God had called me to preach. I came home and I met Cassie one weekend, fell head over heels in love with her. I thought, man, if I could marry this girl, and boy, I did. And then I thought, man, I want to go to Bible college. I want to pastor. And in 1992, I started pastoring my first church. Then I thought, boy, Lord, it'd sure be good if you'd bless us with a little baby boy. 
About a year and a half later, God blessed us with a little baby boy. And just a few days ago, Cassie and I celebrated 34 years of marriage. All of those things happened just like that. And now here I am, and I'm getting senior citizens discounts, and I've not even asked for them. <laughs> for what is your life? I'll tell you what it is. It is a vapor that appeareth for a little while. And then, Brother Caleb, it's gone. It vanisheth away. And I said all that to say this, and you've listened so well tonight. What we do, we best get busy doing it. That gospel track you're going to pass, you best get busy passing it out. That lost family member that God laid on your heart last night, you remember, you wrote their name down. Before I went to bed, I knelt by my bed and called that name before the Lord in prayer. You best get busy winning them. That co-worker that God laid on your heart last night, I'm telling you, you best get busy reaching them. Because just like that, our lives are through. You want to know why God added to the church daily? This church was urgent in their actions. That's my prayer for the Landmark Baptist Church. That you would be united in fellowship, yes. Unanimous in your efforts, yes. But what you do, you best get busy doing it. God help us to be urgent in our actions. You've listened so well. Would you bow your head with me? My Father, I've been amazed especially these last two nights, how you have met with us in a very special way. I believe you've knit our hearts together around the truths of thy word. Now, Father, I pray tonight that we would determine with all that's within us to not only be hearers, but doers of thy word. Lord, this early church, ah, oh, they, they wouldn't a perfect church by any means. But they sure set a great example for us to follow in the first few years of their ministry. What a great example they set in the fact that they were united in fellowship. God, would you make it abundantly clear in this place tonight that that's that's a role that not only the pastor plays, and Lord, I know, I understand, he sets the example, he is a leader. But Lord, a leader is only as effective as those that are willing to follow. And so, Father, maybe some of these precious folks tonight just need to make a new commitment to doing their part in promoting fellowship at the house of God. And then, Lord, maybe, maybe somebody at the Landmark Baptist Church tonight needs to make a new commitment to doing their part in, in helping with the work around here. Maybe they need to determine tonight to do their part in being unanimous in their efforts. The preacher shouldn't be the only one praying or knocking on doors or passing out tracts. He shouldn't be the only one reading and studying his Bible. He shouldn't be the only one that picks up trash on the floor around here and makes sure it gets in the trash receptacle. Lord, every one of us can play a role in things like that. So would you help us tonight 
to make a new commitment to being unanimous in our efforts. And then, Lord, oh, you've made it abundantly clear. Whatever we do for you, we best get busy doing it. Help us, Lord, to see the need for urgency in these last of the last days. And Father, for helping us tonight, we'll give you glory and honor. Lord, I pray that you give Pastor wisdom and discernment as he comes to extend the invitation as you lead him to do so. And I'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name, Pastor. tremendous message God speak to your heart about unity effort urgency As she plays, if God spoke to your heart, will not labor. Helpful tonight, helpful. Thank you, Miss Sharon. Boy, that was helpful tonight. What a great meeting God's been blessing with. We got one more night tomorrow night, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from Brother Caudill, and then he'll head back uh, to Georgia on Friday. And uh, appreciate your faithfulness uh, to being here as you've been able to. We know some have been working, some are not well. And uh, so when you have a meeting like this, you know, we're, we're grateful for who can be here and when. And uh, if you've been here uh, for most of it, you'd have to agree, boy, God's just building every night, just building, building, building. And he's really, really blessed our church. If you've not been able to be here, I encourage you to go back. And you can find them on our website. You can listen to the audio. You can also find the video. And uh, so don't miss uh, catching up on uh, the revival meeting. All right, we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Miss Debbie. Snyder has her scan on Friday, and we've been praying for her, and uh, so we're going to see where those numbers are. So let's we're going when we dismiss in prayer, uh, we're going to remember her, and uh, then we'll see it tomorrow night. Lord, we love you, and we're thankful for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. We're thankful for the good preaching tonight. We're thankful for Brother Caudill and his ministry to our church. And, uh, Lord, we're grateful for the work you're doing in our hearts. Now, Lord, we before we dismiss in prayer, we want to bring up Miss Debbie Snyder, and we pray you'd comfort her heart. And, uh, Lord, give the doctors uh, wisdom as they review her scan. And, uh, Lord, encourage her and strengthen her. And, uh, Lord, we pray that there would be a good report and that you would continue uh, to keep this cancer at bay. And we'll give you the praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.